It's time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Here's your host, John Chapman. All right, welcome to another episode of the 49ers Rush Podcast. I'm your host, as always, John Chapman, and today is different, okay? <laughs> uh, there's no 49ers football this weekend, and that made me sad. I'm very glad we're not playing. So I decided to put together something a little special. Now, we got a couple disclaimers we got to get out there for this episode. We're going to be previewing... And not previewing. We're going to be going through the top 15 plays of the 49ers this year. Okay, top 15 plays of the 49ers this year. And here's the deal: strong chance this stream is not going to stay active. But I don't care. I want football out there, and I want to watch my 49ers. We have earned it. So um, here's what I strongly recommend. And I got to get a couple things out of the way before we move forward. And we're going to go over some video clips and all that stuff from the actual broadcast itself. Number one. Um, this is probably going to last longer on my Periscope. So if you guys are not on Periscope, I recommend jumping over there real quick. If you have Twitter, uh, that's going to be on there as well. So for my YouTube fans, stay with me. But if for some reason this feed goes down, uh, it, that if you want to continue this, jump over there. Now for my audio listening uh, fans, I'm going to be putting up the play calls as well of the top 15 plays. And we're going to talk about them briefly. And not going to be a lot of Q&A today. This is just as the playoffs start in about one hour, I want us to live through the 49ers regular season in the top 15 plays, both offense and defensively, and we're going to go through each one of those uh, today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I got so pumped putting this together. I was a total nerd. Now, a couple things, announcements. I got to get out of the way before we jump into this. Number one, um, I am going to be broadcasting two games this weekend. So if you want to participate in that, here's the deal. We're also giving away a free $50 gift card um, tomorrow's game. So we're, we're going to be broadcasting on the Hot Mic app today, the New England and Tennessee game. And so what you got to do is just download Hot Mic, use the promo code RUSHESF, R-U-S-H-E-S-F. And you can join that. So head over to my Twitter account, at JL underscore Chapman. I have the original tweet on there. It's pinned. So if you click on my profile, and it's a $50 giveaway, an Amazon gift card. We're just going to give away to somebody that follows us and downloads the app. It's 50 bucks. It's free. Uh, got a great chance to win that. Just head over there and follow those. All you have to do is retweet something, download the app, and then watch us, and you win. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple there. Um, so we are broadcasting again today the New England game, and then tomorrow the Seattle Seahawks game. So we'll, we got a lot of football we're going to be covering um, there. Also, do have to give a mention to our sponsors, my bookie, who are the absolute best sports book uh, betting site online. And here's the deal: we did our three team teaser, which kickoffs in about forty five minutes. So if you want to join us on that one, we've hit two in a row. Um, we took a seven point teaser, three team seven point teaser. We took the Buffalo Bills, which are plus nine and a half. We took the Tennessee Titans, which that's dropped a little bit. If you bet with us yesterday, you got in at a plus 12. Um, and then we also took the New Orleans Saints at a minus one. So they just have to win by that. So that's my bookie. They're the best. Head over there, mybookie.ag. Use promo code 49ers, 49ERS. And they're going to double your initial deposit. So uh, really, really excited for that. Please head over there. That's going to be great. And again, uh, if this feed goes down, which I think it might, <laughs> uh, make sure you head over to Periscope or Twitter or Twitch. Uh, that's probably they're going to they're a little less strict with what's going on there. So without further ado, let's jump over. And again, just let us know in the chat if it does go down. I'll try to keep monitoring this, but we are going to start. Play number 15, here we go, the 15th best play of the season for the 49ers, here we go. 19 yards, that's the biggest or greatest offensive gainer for the Redskins today. And a first down inside the 30. Peterson knocked down, the ball is out, and the 49ers have it. Taylor going the other way with a San Francisco Man, what takeaway. An awesome job there. 
by two of the best. Uh, you know, Quan, who is going to be coming back soon. You know, <laughs> he gets it there. He forces the fumble. It was a close ball game. Julian Taylor, who's also out, recovers it, gets a great return. You see Adrian Peterson on a knee there. Just absolute great. That is the 15th best play and kind of set the tone. It was 3-0 to zero at that point. It was still a close game. Um, but defense matters, and as we get Quan back, that's huge as well. Let's move on to the number 14 call. Here we go. Is that low line drive punt, the good return by Lockett, and now Seattle looking to take advantage. As he comes back to Metcalf, and Metcalf weaves his way, and look at the leg drive. Oh, man, that is awesome. All the way down to the <laughs> one-yard line. 49ers they claiming they've got down. the ball. Oh, Let's the watch replay. the end of this play. Didn't get in. <laughs> DK Metcalf, but watch Jaquiski Tart at the end of this play, and you be the judge. There. Absolutely. Metcalf, awesome. not does it come out? Tart. Yes, that ball is out. Right there. And here's the deal. That's back-to-back -back plays of guys we're getting back. Um, you know, if you just wanted to go through two different games – all year, I think that you could have just done the Saints and the Seahawks games because they were just instant classics. Here we go, number 13. Second and five. Yep. Wilson pressure off the edge, there. releases it, and it is intercepted by Greenlaw. Trey Greenlaw, wow, now that on the return. Trey Greenlaw. As he's still this on his feet with blockers in front. Trey Greenlaw down the sideline. That should have been enough to this. Uh, Russell Wilson it's not throws happen, the but pick. He has done everything in his power. <laughs> so you remember, we didn't have Kittle that game either. Wow, and I know that the I know that the audio is a lot louder on the replays, and so I apologize about that. Uh, tried to adjust it, but I was unsuccessful as these are all individual clips. But um, huge play right there. That should have won it. Dre Greenlaw gave the 49ers chances to win that game, and I love that whenever he plays against the Seattle Se Seahawks, we got to have him out there uh, even on offense. That was number 13. Here is number 12. I like this one a lot. The 39-yard line. Going left, eyes down field, great protection, wide open. George Kittle inside the 10, touchdown San Francisco. Whoa, baby. That's 61 yards. And, and man, you, you if you look at it and you see what's happening right there, and they were already way out of this <laughs> this game. It wasn't even close. But whatever you add to the fact that that's the number two seed in the NFC, and that was kind of icing on the cake. You're up 23 to eight already, but after that point, it was just over. Uh, absolutely no competition level whatsoever. And Kittle, uh, you could have made the top 15 plays for Kittle, and y you would have had to cut out some good plays. But absolute great play there. Let's move on to number 11. To this game, needing to prove something on defense. It all comes down to that equation right here on this last-second effort by Tampa. All right, here we go on the 21-yard line. Winston in trouble. It is picked off. Akello Witherspoon. With the interception and a 49ers touchdown. Oh, my. Oh, my. That is a screen. That ball should have gotten thrown into the dirt. San Francisco read this all the way. He's trying to get the ball to Dare Ogabawale right here behind this offensive right line. There's no, nobody there. The year. That is just oh, a poor so decision. Decision making. You cannot so win in the NFL with turnovers. Third one of the day for Tampa. Second touchdown interception. And, it, you know, it's it, it's funny because, you know, you look on that play and it's all because of the pass rush. And it kind of gets you, 
just a little excited <laughs> for what it could be with D Ford returning. Again, I know the audio is off a little bit. It's a little loud on the broadcast. I apologize about that, guys. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot fix that right now. <laughs> That's on me. Uh, but as we keep going through this, you know, Akello, first three weeks is wonderful. And I don't think that he should be starting anymore. We've talked a lot about that. But uh, he still has contributed a lot of good positive plays. And now we're into the top ten. And here we go. Why not? Let's go back to the offense on this one. Here we go. He's a rock and well. Now the 49ers respond with a fake. Garoppolo's got all day. He's going to launch it deep down the field, going for it all and getting it. Emmanuel Sanders, not touched, still on his feet, inside the 10, and he scores. How he had the understanding. 75 yard bomb from Jimmy Garoppolo to Emmanuel Sanders. This game's been big play city already. Yeah, and yeah, anytime you have a 75-yard touchdown, you're doing something right. <laughs> 75 yards at a touchdown. Again, as I said, uh, that Saints and the Seahawks games are going to be very heavily favored in the top 15 plays. But what a pass by Jimmy Garoppolo. And one of my favorite things about that play is the 75-yard touchdown to uh, Emmanuel Sanders. That was a complete team effort. You had perfect blocking, protection, time, um, open downfield, perfect pass, great catch, gets up. I mean, just all across the board, something special. Um, and here we go. Uh, this next play, let's jump over to the defense. Let's go back to that Seahawks game. Play action off of this on second and seven, and they get to him, and they do so by bringing Williams, and then the ball comes out. And picking it up is Buckner. And we've got a San Francisco touchdown. DeForest Buckner. Great football awareness. <laughs> Look at that face. Oh wow, the face of Pete Carroll not knowing what how did how did that happen? <laughs> that is awesome. You had K1 Williams forcing a fumble, then you had Fred Warner come in and force a fumble, then you had the second team all pro DeForest Buckner uh scoop it up and get into the end zone. What a huge uh how do you force two turnovers in one play and get a touchdown? What an absolute game. And it's so funny because the first game with the Seattle Seahawks, there were seven turnovers in the game between two teams. The second time, zero turnovers. <laughs> you never know what to expect. Um, definitely interesting. And if for this one, number eight, we're going to dip into Kyle Shanahan's deep uh, bag of tricks. Here we go. Come inside. A little trickery here. Sanders going to throw it What? Time to go surfing for Moser to hauls it in. This game is bonkers. What a beginning. 35 yards from Emmanuel Sanders. Man, and you, you cannot put together um, just how meaningful those two players have been. You're, you're talking about a pass from Emmanuel Sanders that you traded for, and then the catch with Raheem Mostert, who was the fourth running back on the depth chart to start the year. You know, I just put out on Twitter, uh, you know, way back before the season, I did uh, stats and projections for the entire offense. And I statted out every pass, catch, all that stuff. Did really, <laughs> did pretty well, if, uh, if I can't say so myself. Um, but you couldn't predict uh, Raheem Mostert. And I did it before Jarek McKinnon went down with the injury. But uh, I was spot on with Tevin Coleman and with Matt Breida. Uh, actually only missed, uh, if you see that on the Twitter, on Twitter, I humble bragged big time on that one. But Mostert and Sanders, two new additions that have just been huge. And speaking of new additions, I don't think anybody has been more important than this guy right here. Goes to the sidelines for the first time today. And Bonifon has come in from... And the pass is going to be picked off by Bosa. Nick Bosa. Wow. <laughs> That's not normal. Can't bring him down till he gets to the eight-yard line. That wow. Nick Bosa. Have 
the day. Like I said earlier, exhausted from being awesome. Fights off the cut block, and then it's all on his own. Looks like a running back. I'm telling you what, Nick Bosa, have yourself a Pro Bowl day, my friend. Wow. And it, that whole game was Nick Bosa's best game. That was whenever he was the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And, man, the Carolina Panthers were 4-2 and two and <laughs> just crushed their soul and their spirit. Uh, coaches fired. Quarterbacks going to be let go. I mean, just completely ended everything. And it all started with the defense. And so we're going to stay um, – on defense, again, this is play number six, almost in the top five. And, man, these top six plays I struggled with, and I have moved them around. And you, you guys let me know if this order is incorrect. But this is the number six play, again, staying on defense from the defensive leader himself, heck of a year in his sophomore year, Fred Warner uh, coming in, play number six. And it's him here. Four-man <laughs> rush. Look at that crowd, man. Look at that crowd. That is something special. And, you know, there's a couple key takeaways on that. One, the crowd was a factor. Two, Fred Warner, he gets in there and scores his first touchdown of his career. Totally chill. <laughs> like he'd been there before. He is not going to go all crazy. It's just not his personality. Um, and now we move into the top five. And, again, if you guys, if this goes down, make sure you jump over to Periscope or Twitter so you can catch the top five because this is huge. And here we go. Um, a very unfamiliar player jumps in at the five spot. It's been a long time since we have seen this cat, but uh, you cannot take away the importance of this play early in the season. Here we go into our top five now. Number five. Walk off the field under his own power. Second and goal. Garoppolo throwing at the goal line. Touchdown. Dante Pettis. Give Pettis credit for coming back to the football. As soon as Garoppolo released this, I thought Steven Nelson was going to step in front of it and get the interception. Nelson was on the outside. He fell off of his receiver and started collapsing to the inside to where Pettis was. But Pettis, because of the way he comes back and attacks the football. All right, man. Dante Pettis has just kind of completely disappeared. Very similar to the Kello Witherspoon the other day. And that is rough. Um, but still, key game there. That's the second week of the season. And you are down with two minutes left. And you get the go-ahead touchdown. That's a game winner. Uh, that is huge. I really hope that we can get something out of Pettis long term. Uh, I think he'll get a clean shot next season, but that's about it. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. I am seeing in the comments, uh, Rush ESF, sorry, is the hot mic app code. R-U-S-H-E-S-F. Sorry about that. Uh, a little late on that one. Thank you, Shellshot. Uh, thank you guys for all the help on there. Again, $50 gift card given away. All you have to do is head over to the Twitter account, at JL underscore Chapman. Click on my profile. It's the pinned tweet. Um, you'll see the Eat Sleep Fantasy tweet that I kind of retweeted. You just retweet that, follow us, and tune in for the game. And that's 50 bucks. It's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> Matthew's still upset at Pettis, and I get it, man. Um, I, I, it's frustrating whenever you spend that second round pick and you get, we used a third to trade up to get Pettis, but, um, he did contribute some this season. Yeah. We don't want to see him out there too much, but, uh, that's kind of where it's at. And here we go. Let's move in. I want to keep going through this just because I don't think it's going to be up very long. So I want to make sure everybody gets through this. I really wanted to include two plays here <laughs> for number four, but I thought that was cheating. So this is the second amazing play of the same drive. Here we go. Play number four. Jimmy Garoppolo have another 17-yarder in this bag of tricks. We'll see. Ryan. Ram show blitz. They come with it. Garoppolo firing deep. He's got a man wide open. Third and 16, are you kidding me? 
So watch the top. Jalen Ramsey 20, Taylor Rapp 24, and Taylor Rapp is so far over on the coverage, he has no chance to affect the play. He's covering grass, as we like to say, on the defensive side. Wow. So <laughs> what a game. What a game. And my favorite thing about that is, one, um, you know, the 49ers were 0 for 15 on third and 16 since Kyle Shanahan's joined. 0 for 15. They convert two of them in the same drive. And just what a play at the end of the game to get it up there. Uh, magnificent. Jalen Ramsey gets burnt, sent the Rams home. They don't get to make the playoffs. Just so much about that is so great. Um, Huge play right there. And now let's jump to another game winner. Here we go. Play number three with his only offensive snap of the game. Guess it. Guess who comes in clutch at play number three? Jeff Wilson has come in at running back. Garoppolo's throw is caught by Jeff Wilson. He's going to score a touchdown for the 49ers. And that's how it goes. Well, you brought the blitz, so to counter that, you're going to drop your outside rusher in coverage. And the San, San Francisco 49ers, I don't know if they anticipated the blitz, but boy, did they get a great matchup <laughs> with oh, a running back it. against an edge rusher. And uh, there's so much to take away from that one. Um, everybody celebrating with them. The game winner, you're down points at home. You go out and you make that play. I mean, just huge. Absolute huge plays. Only snap of the game. And it, what is it? Just a game winner. 25-yard touchdown uh, with less than a minute to go. That was just absolutely huge. Now, we could disagree about the order, um, you know, all the way through this. But these two plays, I struggle with. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the top two plays, it, everybody knows which two they are. I did a poll uh, before week 17, and, you know, what was the play of the year offensively and put it up there. I think it was like 92% went with the, went with the Kittle play. And, you know, I had it number one, then I moved it number two, and I went back and forth. But here it is, I think, the most impressive single performance on a play all year. Uh, you got to give it up to the All-Pro. Best tight end in the game. We make the argument the best player in the game. Number two. Garoppolo fires. It is caught still on his feet as Kittle with a big play and the stiff arm. George Kittle flags fly. He's down to the 30. What a run by George Kittle. Take it on, everybody. But the penalty is huge. There are multiple flags. It would be a 39 yarder on fourth and two. Thinking face mask here. And there it is, Marcus Williams grabbing Kittle's mask, and he refuses to go down despite that. And look at how he's protecting the football. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 43. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. Half the distance to the goal. Correction, automatic, first down. Look at the fight between the two of them. The mask is held the entire way by Marcus man, Williams, and Kittle man. refuses to go down. And, man... It, how he is able to do I, I don't know if you guys I'm going to date myself here uh, Mortal Kombat was my favorite video game in the world uh, growing up yeah lots it's way too violent whatever I don't care um, and whenever that movie came out the Mortal Kombat one of the best soundtracks ever right it was in every like high school football players uh, mix but anyway all that to be said Sang Sung, uh, the main bad guy in the movie, would capture people's souls, right? Your soul is mine. <laughs> That's George Kittle. And so I, I haven't heard this thrown out there, but from now on, uh, I, I'm just saying this. George Kittle's new nickname is it's Shang Sung. That's who he is because he just takes away people's souls. Uh, it's what it is. Oh, uh, man, we got done. Know what happened. Everybody, head over. I'm going to wait just a few minutes. Um, I head over. Uh, <laughs> John Lamar. Chapman on Periscope. 
Uh, <laughs> oh no! Yeah, we we got it. We we didn't get it finished all the way on YouTube. That's okay. I'm gonna post this, uh, the audio and all that kind of stuff on Twitter as best I can. But um, hopefully people can head over there. I hate that it just uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It, it, sorry about that, guys. That's huge. It, it went down, but that's what it is. Um, we, we're gonna take just a quick second there before. We, we jump over and do the number one play, which we all know. Um, the biggest one ever. <laughs> the biggest play ever. Uh, it's just what it is um, against the Seahawks. So here we go. Let's jump now. Uh, hopefully they had some <laughs> time to make it over. The number one play of the season, and why not? The final play of the entire regular season, uh, ending the 100th year of the NFL, uh, division, title on the line, everybody's watching, fourth and five, here we go. And it's fourth down and goal, and the play clock is down to three, and here we go, and Wilson throws, caught, and it is going to be Hollister, then the ball winds up in the hands of a 49er, Jimmy Ward. But they're going to say Ward's going to run all the way into the end zone. But what's the call down at the goal line here? This is like the Atlanta game. And is this a fumble? And if it is, the 49ers had players running on the field as it was happening. A this is total insanity. To go under review. So th this play is under review. Let's take a We'll go back to the inception of the play and what happens at the goal line. Does he get over the goal line? If he does, none of the rest of that even matters. Hollister gets taken down. Ooh. Oh, I Looks don't short think you to me. say he was across the line. It's just the opposite of the Atlanta game that they. Holy cow. What a way for the hundredth year to end. Wow. Just special, special, special. And I hate that we lost a handful of our crowd for the end there, but you've got to give it up to it. That play had the most uh, value on it. You come down to the one-inch line. If the Seahawks get in, they get the um, you know they get the title for the NFC West. 49ers would be playing this weekend, but we don't have to because we got Dre Greenlaw, who is so special. And there's so many great plays. It was hard to narrow it down to 15, but uh, I'll put up a thread on uh, Twitter as well where I'll cut these clips up individually and throw those up there and we can relive those moments there because I know not everybody got to finish that and that's what it is. So uh, just want to say thanks again. A, a couple other things, just again, housekeeping stuff. As always, my bookie, uh, somebody just asked, promo code is 49ers49ERS 49 if you want to join us on the betting site. Again, uh, our three-team teaser, we're taking the Titans at plus 12. We're taking the Buffalo Bills Um you know, we, we got in a little bit early on that, but the Buffalo Bills, who are going to get almost 10 points in our seven-point teaser, and then also we are taking the Saints at minus one. So the Saints just have to win by more than one, and that's going to double up your money there. A lot of fun. Join us on the Hot Mic app as well. Use the promo code RUSHESF, $50 gift card. We're giving it away in the second quarter of tomorrow's Seahawks game, which is going to be a lot of fun versus the Eagles. Just want to say thank you. And, again, this was just a bonus episode I wanted to throw up there because we've got to watch some 49ers football. Uh, yeah, even if we got a bye week, we've got to watch it. So just want to say thanks, guys. Appreciate it as always. And please hit that like and subscribe button wherever it is you're listening. Until the next time, stay strong, faithful.